Hey everybody, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Jim and I've spent the last 40 years farming and logging with draft horses. In this seven part series, I'm going to be covering some of the basic essentials of owning and caring for draft horses. I know there are many different ways of doing things. My goal is to just to show you what has worked well for me and what I wish I had known starting out. So each Friday we'll have a new segment of this series. But stay tuned for, on Mondays and Wednesdays for our normal videos about our everyday life of working with horses. Hi everybody. Today we're on our very last of this series that I'm doing. When I originally started this series on horse basics, I was going to just do seven, seven series. And uh, last week was actually the seventh but I never went over hitching up the team to a cart and talking more about my D-ring harnesses. And that's what I want to do today. So today we have um, Lady and Bill, and we're gonna be hitching them up to my one cart. And then I'm going to be going up into the woods and actually unhitching from the one cart and then hitching onto my logging cart because I want to explain a few things, mostly about the D-ring harnesses, but a lot is also about actually just hitching up to a cart with two horses. And so let's do that. Um, I do want to show you one thing that I had never actually done before. Um, I've had people ask me how heavy my harnesses are, and I've actually you know, wondered that myself before, and I've never actually weighed them up. So what I did is I took Bill's, I mean, I'm sorry, I took um, Buck's harness and I put them on the scales over here. Now Buck and Ken's harnesses are, are the heaviest harnesses I have. The harnesses I have on these two are a little bit lighter and then the new harnesses that I'm getting are, are a little bit maybe heavier than these but still lighter than Buck and, and Ken's. And so uh, let's go and I will show you what these harnesses weighed. So this is Buck's harness. I just kind of laid it in a heap down there on top of the scales. And it turns out it's actually lighter than I thought. Um, hey, I just got an idea. Before I tell you what that weighs, um, throw, put in your, put the, just for fun, put in the, shut the, com, shut your um, video off and put in the comments what this harness weighs. This is just one harness that I have on the scales. So, this harness weighs 50 pounds. And I kind of thought it would weigh a little bit more than that. I don't, you probably can't see it. But I'm going to throw the collar on also. And that brings it up. I just weighed this earlier, so no. That brings it up to about 60, 65 pounds. So the collar is approximately 15 pounds. So that's kind of new to me. I was, I didn't know what it would weigh. Okay, so let's go out to the cart and I'll explain a few things there. So this is the cart that I use for a lot of different implements. Um, I usually have it parked back in there hitched to the manure spreader, um, but I brought it out here so it's in the light and it won't be quite so dark. So let's start with the front end of the cart. So the front end of the cart, we have a neck yoke on. This is a neck yoke. This will slide in and off that cart. A lot of my neck yokes on a lot of different things like that. That's my plow over there. That neck yoke is, is bolted on. This one is just slid in place. This is what we call a three-piece neck yoke. In other words, it's three pieces. You get this piece here, and you get these two pieces here. With the D-ring harnesses, you have to have a neck yoke like this. So if you come back here, this is the evener, this whole apparatus. If you break this down to separate pieces, you have the evener is the whole thing, and the actual evener is this part here. Some people call it a double tree. And if you were to take this off, this one piece here, this is the single tree. Some people call it whipple tree. Some people call it whiffle tree. Uh, there's a lot of different names for different places around the country and the world that call them different things. So this is what they actually pull off. This is a homemade cart that I had made up many, many years ago. And so many of my carts, even like that one there, is a homemade cart. And uh, someone asked me what axe, what, what it came off, and I have no idea what it came off, what car brand it was. But anyways, they're all homemade. So you're saying this is from an old car? The axle itself is from an old car, yes, or possibly a truck, I'm not even sure. All of my carts have just axles that are, are from old vehicles. But yeah. I'm just curious of how old it is, because I like old vehicles. Yeah, I have no idea. No idea. 
How long have you had it? Well, I think both of these carts I've had for over, well over 30 years. And they were off old junk cars at the time. So they got a little aged to them. They're, they're, they're smooth out. <laughs> so this is really interesting to me because I just never thought of where they came from. It never, it never crossed my mind, and I, I think that's really cool. New life for old things, very old things. Oh, my. Oh. So after you walk your horses over the tongue, and a lot of times horses, it takes a while to teach them to actually walk over the tongue or the pole. Um, but they will get used to after a while. But then you have your neck yoke that always has to go on first. Now I say always, always hitch your neck yoke first and always unhitch your neck yoke very last. Uh, this might be a good time to tell a story about hitching up. Years ago, um, I was logging right down the road from the farm there where I was living on back in Vermont. And I had a good pair of horses. One of those horses that were basically bomb proof. And I had a small roadway and I was cutting spruce pulp. And at lunchtime, all I had was the small roadway and I, it was four foot spruce pulp. So I had a stack of pulp over here that I would cut up. So I'd skid out a hitch with my logging cart right here and then I would um, cut it up. And so what had happened that particular day, I had, if I can explain this, I had the the, the, the hitch was right in front of the horses because I had unhitched it and turned the horses around and I was feeding them the lunch. So what I did at the time, this was, this was a long time ago. So what I did at the time, and I was doing this for some time and I've never done it since, but I actually swung the horses around. They were looking right at the, the logs that I still had to cut up. And I went back, I unhitched the evener. No, no, I take that back. I... How to hitch like I unhitched the neck yoke, dropped the neck yoke and the pole on the ground. And then I took their bridles off. They might have had halters underneath at the time, I don't even remember, but I took their bridles off. I had what we had was um, nose bags for the grain, so I put their grain on over the heads. It was a nose bag thing. And so here they were standing here, just the eveners hitched, no neck yoke. After I got done, I can't remember if I did lunch. Maybe I started working here before I ate my lunch, but whatever. I was in front of them with a chainsaw cutting things up. So there was hardly anything here left over because I'd been piling this pulp. So here I was running the chainsaw and all of a sudden in the corner of my eye, I saw this pair of horses running right at me. Now, as you can see, without the neck yoke hitched, but you hitched to the cart, that pole is going to spin in such a way that it's just gonna do crazy things. So anyways, they hit me. And as they went through, I so clearly remember grabbing right onto this horse. And it was, a, it was Bill and Barney. This was Bill and this was Barney at the time. Grab right hold of this harness, this horse. And I was actually dragged behind. And I can't remember if that pole was still there or if it had already turned. I knew the pole was going to turn. And I also knew that cart was behind me. And I dragged for a little while being dragged by the horse, but realizing I can't go on like this. I've got to let go. I knew the cart was behind me and I knew there was absolutely no way that cart was gonna miss me because it was directly behind me. But I just so clearly remember letting go of this harness, dropping down in a flat position, my feet behind me like this, my hands out like this stretched right long because I didn't want to be stepped on the horses. I knew the cart was gonna hit me. But I laid right down like this and put my head in the ground and miraculously, one more of those miracles, I'm a true believer of miracles, um, one more of those true, true miracles where my God took care of me and uh, I never got touched by that car. Somehow it bounced over me. I don't know what happened. But anyways, as after they were by, I could see the horses running off. I don't think they went that far. But... It just was one of those things, you just, a, a learning moment in life that you just never ever forget. And so whenever I ever see anybody unhitching a neck yoke before they unhitch the evener, I just go a little bit berserk and uh, usually tell them my story and tell them don't ever do that again, especially if you're working for me. 
So anyways, let's continue on. That took long enough time. Uh, let's get hitched up. So I usually, when I hitch up the, my neck yoke, I usually grab the outside one. I do it a little bit different, different ways, different times, but most of the time I do it like this. I drop that hook in there. Then I swing over here and hitch this hook here and then continue right through the lady and hitch up all four hooks. And then if you've got a good team that stands good, then you just walk around and hitch up the evening. If you don't have a good team that stands good, this is a perfect time to be tied to something. I have that truck, old truck body there that I like to use. And I will, if I had a new horse or a pair of Colts, I could park it right there and hitch up while the truck body is in front of them. These guys are great, so it's not an issue. So I'm a little bit close to the end of the neck yoke or, or the pole, so I'm gonna back them up just a little bit. Oh, and now I'm gonna swing around and hitch the tugs. I generally make a habit of doing it basically the same with every cart and with every situation. So I'll take the inside tug and hitch it where it needs to be. And I know from experience, this goes on the second link. So I hitch it right on the second link. Lady swings into place. I back her up a little bit and I hitch on to this second link. Why do you know from experience it goes on the second link? Well, in this particular car, I know that's where we hitch it. Just, I remember. Um, so at this point, I will do one or two things. I will walk around that way or I'll walk around in front of them. A lot of times I'll walk in front of them because if the horses have stepped up a little bit, I might want to back them up a little bit. So I just walk up in front of them and actually take the horse that's a, that hasn't been hitched and have him back up a little bit like this. Right now, since I'm on, on a loose cart like this, very good chance it's just gonna push the cart right backwards. So then I come over here and I hitch up the inside tug a bill. If you notice on my other videos, I've talked about lazy straps and I know I don't always have lazy straps in these two. On um, this, um, but I do right now, and I wanna show you these lazy straps. What I have here is really nice because I actually just snap them in place. If I wanna use them, great. If I don't, I just hang them up. So that works good. Okay, so now, I will hitch my inside tug. I will always try to get my hooks so they're pointing upright. If I go to an odd link, this is the second link. If I go to the first link or the third link, I will put my hook so it's kind of pointed out like that. That's not really crucial, it's just kind of a good thing to do. So my last one, the one thing that's different about a D-ring harness is compared to a, a lot of other harnesses, we, we hitch it really tight. Everything's tight, tight, tight. Um, and I'm gonna explain a little bit more about that as we go along. So now, because of that, you have to get your leg behind the whipple tree like this. And then I kinda, it's, it's a pretty tight fit. So what I do, and it depends on each situation too, and it's different on my other, my logging cart, and I'll explain to you that, explain that to you later. But I kind of rock it like this. When I rock it like this, you can see, as I'm rocking it, if you could just go up there and look at the front of the pole. As I'm rocking it, the pole goes up and down. See that? Are you seeing that? Yep. So that's going up and down. Okay, come back here. So what I'll do as I rock it, and then this there again depends on each cart, but as I rock it, I can usually get that hitch. Back up, Bill. Back up here. Back up here. There. See, I, I rocked it. I kicked it in place. On my logging cart, I can't do that. And so now we're going to hitch onto the wagon and go up. And I'm going to show you on a even a tighter setup what you have to do. Okay, so we made it up in the woods. And uh, 
One more shit thing I wanted to show you on the harnesses here before I unhitch from this cart and go on to my other cart. When you're using a D-ring harness, what you should shoot for is having this side strap line right up pretty well straight with the, with the pole strap. Um, so this should be a pretty well straight shot back with the britching. That way when they hold back a load, it's a straight shot. You don't have this one pointing upward or pointing downward or whatever. Um, if, it's, if this is pointing down, it's more likely because your tugs aren't tight enough. You have to have these tugs very tight. Now, when they're tight enough, there should be basically no um, weight on this collar. So these lazy straps should be loose, both outside and inside ones on both horses. Now hers is just a tiny little bit uh, tighter than his, but they're still quite loose. So that means you have very little weight on their necks. More of the weight is put on their back, and there's a decent amount of weight on their back, but the back can handle it more than that small little point on the neck, which is what gets sore a lot of times on horses that don't have these harnesses hitched up properly. So I'm gonna hitch onto this cart and hitch onto my other cart and show you a few more things. I said I'm going to hitch on to this. They say it wrong. They say it wrong quite often. Sometimes when I'm unhitching a car, I do it several different ways. Sometimes I will pick my lines up and walk over like this and unhitch. Sometimes I will, any, anytime you do something like this, it's quite dangerous for the pair that's not really um, well trained. Even with a pair that's well trained, you need to be careful doing this stuff. So, but sometimes I would just reach over and unhitch that tug and let it drop on the ground. And then I come up here and unhitch my neck yoke. If I go all the way through and unhitch that tug, then I'll go up there and unhitch that side of the neck yoke. But I, lately I've been doing it this way, but I, I, I do it several different ways. And anyway, it's fine if I get used to it. I shouldn't say anyway, but most ways work quite well. But you have to um, make sure that's a safe way to do it. Um, and stepping in there between the hitched whipple tree and the horse is not a safe way to do it unless you have a really good horse. So then I come up to unhitch the neck yoke. When I unhitch the neck yoke, I will always do it like this. I will unhitch the outside of this horse here, or it doesn't matter which horse, but I unhitch the outside hook and then come over here and unhitch the other outside hook. That drops that pole down. If you don't do it like that, and if you unhitch that outside hook on him and the outside hook on this horse, what happens is this pole will quite often swing over and hit their legs. Now you don't want to do that, obviously. So if you were to go and do it this other way by unhitching both of the outside ones first, it's not going to slide over and hit his legs. And then when you drop it down, it's fairly close to the ground. It's just going to drop to the ground and not hit either one of their legs. Very important. So now, I'll go over and hitch onto my other cart. Before I take off, since I dropped this tug, I obviously need to pick this up and pick it up and get out of the way before I go. Oh. Hey. Oh. Mr. Pa. Ha, careful, ha. Ha, careful. Careful. It's really important and good to have all of your horses be able to walk over the tongue, the pole. Careful, careful. Oh, if you notice when I hitched onto the other cart, I put Lady over the pole, and this time I put Bill over the pole. There's just times, you usually have one horse that does it better than the other one, but there's times where you need to have both horses able to do that. So then I'll come up here and hitch on to the neck yoke. Now I want to do an ex show something here. Um, I don't think Brenda's actually ever done this before. Brenda's here helping me. Uh, I want you to reach down, Brenda, if you could, and just grab 
grab that tongue anywhere you can, maybe right here, and lift it right up. It's heavy. It is heavy. Mm. Now, Brenda's quite a strong girl. <laughs> uh, but I don't know what that weighs, but it's very heavy. This cart, okay, guesses as to what it weighs? That? Yeah. I don't know. But this, mm -hmm. this cart is very heavy. Mm. This cart is positioned and set up so all the weight is in front of the axle. Um, my other car, it's more centered, so there's a little bit more weight in the back, actually not much. But anyways, it's still a lot lighter car, and some carts are very light in the tongue. This one here is set up to be very heavy, just the way it's set up, and I'll talk about that more in some other video when I'm doing horse logging. But uh, um, it is heavy, and because it is heavy, all the more reason to put the weight on their back and not on their necks. And it's not like it's all the weight here. There's still a little bit of weight on the necks, but it just takes a tremendous amount of weight off of the necks and puts much more of it up here. So let me hitch up and I'll show you a few things in this particular cart. Even though there's a heavy pole, by lifting one at a time up like this, it doesn't, it doesn't seem that heavy. You, you don't notice it so much as if you're just trying to pick it up like Brenda did. Every cart that I have, I have to remember which link to put it at, and that gets a little bit hard sometimes. And I don't always remember. I, I go and try one and it doesn't work. But uh, this one here, I'm quite sure that's the right link. So then I'll come around to Bill's side. Now I know this car is a little bit different. And we're kind of right in the brush, so. So here's something that I do with a car that has a really tight hitch. And I, it's, it's actually a good thing to do on basically almost any cart, because you want it with a D-ring harness, you actually do want it this tight. So I come up here, I will release this pole strap and then I'll go back and hitch the tugs. But before I do that, I'm gonna, this is, I normally just release it right now, but I'm gonna hitch it back up again just so I can show you what happens. We picked a dandy day to come do this. I hate logging those first couple weeks in May. The, deer, the black flies are just awful and they're terrible today. I usually put fly spray on them, I didn't today, and so we're gonna have to fight it. But I actually came up this morning and, and cut the trees that I wanna get out today. I just need one, actually I just need 10 um, six by sixes in tamarack for an order, so I wanna get that today. So um, hopefully, since it's all cut, it shouldn't take but just a few minutes, I can quick snake it up here, throw it on the wagon, and head home. So anyways, here we are, hitching the inside tug. And then I'm going to come back here and hitch the outside tug. So what's going to happen with this situation is I'm going to hitch the end. Now everything is so tight, there's no way I can get back to that link that I want. I don't care how hard you push, I shouldn't say that, but it would be very, very, very difficult to do it. What I have to do is lift that pole way in the air to be able to get this a hitch. If I had somebody here helping me every time and I had them go up and actually lift the, the tongue in the air, this would hitch easy, but I'm here alone 99% of the time. So I can't get this hitch. So I have to do one of a couple of different things. I can go to a different link and I don't want this on the second link here and those on the fourth link. They have to be all the same. So I could go back and change that, but it still wouldn't be that tight, tight fit, which is which I want with the D-ring harness. So because of this, some people will actually put a block behind the wheel and have them back up. When they back up in that situation, the tongue will go in the air, then sometimes you can hitch that. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. This way I'm showing you now works every time. And it's just, it just, to me, more of a sure thing than these other options. So it's loose there. I'm gonna come back up and release this pole strap, which I would have already normally done. And as you can see also, since this pole is not tight, things aren't tight yet, if you watch that strap right like that, it doesn't go straight with this one here. See how it drops, Brenda? See how it goes like this and then yeah, drops down? I'm trying to get the angle. 
so I'm hoping we're showing this because it's kind of dark in here and we're in, in, the, in the brush. But it doesn't go straight. Okay, so I'm going to release that. I don't have to take it all the way out, just release it. And then I can come back here and hitch it. Pretty easily compared to what I was trying to do before. And then I come up here and already you can see a change. So what I do is give this a good hard pull like that. Put it through the buckle. Put my leg behind the neck yoke. Don't you love that? I got a phone call. Okay. So now, so now I come up here, grab this, give this a hard tug like that. Put it through the buckle, put my leg behind the neck yoke like this, and pull and push at the same time. And it's fairly easy to put it right up into the hole that you want. Now if you come up here and Brenda, you shall see that loose as can be, good and loose. So that's going to take the weight off their necks and put it on their backs. And if you come back here and look at the harness from the side angle, you can see the pole straps and the side straps are fairly lined right up with a britchin. So what am I missing? Um, the other advantages of these uh, harnesses is because everything is so tight, when you're going forward and going back, you don't have any slop in it. Everything's tight. And so um, when you're turning, the horses are less apt to have the pole hit them because everything is so tight, it just, it just won't happen. They're going to stay between their tugs and they're not going to be hitting the pole. I'm sure there's other things to explain with D-ring harnesses. And if you guys have any... Uh, anything out there that you can think of that would be of a help to people that are thinking about using the D-ring harness, by all means put it in the comments below. And uh, I'm going to go get some tamarack trees out and try to get this job done before these bugs eat us right up. Okay. Are you guys ready to get this show on the road? Ready to go? Ready to go, Billy? Cups up. Well, I hope you've enjoyed these basics series that we've been doing. Um, if you've got any other ideas for some more instructional videos, please let me know in the comments below and I will see what I can do. So you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.